and gents, the girls want to know is back today. And we what are I talking boost? about, okay, then we're talking about some <laughs> hot shit today. Hot shit. We are talking about, you guys, are we moving into a new era of dating? And yes, the fuck we are. We are. Yes. The tables I, have turned. The tables have turned. <laughs> uh, like, we're all, I think, just, we're at a an impasse, I think. It's interesting. It's weird. Yeah. You know, I don't know if this is, for me, if it's maturity and now you are just seeing things differently, but I, in the last year or t- three, I feel like dating has been just way more complicated yeah. than I've ever experienced it and or... Now there's like all these like podcasts in different talk shows that are like predominantly a back and forth with men and women mm-hmm. about what they need and what we need and what they don't do it. Like it's yeah. just and I think also there's a lot of people who are consuming the podcast information. I think a lot of people need to touch grass. Like if we're being honest, <laughs> like, you need to touch that grass. People really sit online and uh think that the scenarios that are presented on social media are the end all be all. And that is the reality for a hundred percent of like relationships and um, situationships that exist. And it's just not that. Mm-hmm. And I think there's a lot of unfair expectations put on women. I think that social yeah. media is a big, plays a huge part yeah. in where we are in this new yeah. era. Um, especially if you want to go all the way back to like our grandparents or they parents. Yeah. Cause they weren't dealing with this. You had to walk like, a, a long walk to get to that woman. Yeah. Like, you had to court you her. You just go online. You had to court her. 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 Yes. yes. You had to see her like in passing and then ask the homies who she is and then uh, go talk to somebody and see if you could talk to her. Like it was a whole process. Was, also, you needed to know her family. You needed to know her family. You needed to take her on dates. You needed to have like, means to support her and the thing is like we've come into a time now where women have means to support themselves but he's created an entirely new issue in the Mm -hmm. dating world where there's this fight for almost equal rights in a relationship where it's like and i and yeah this is i this is my opinion i feel like this is more of a thing now because of the fact that women are not in the same mental space that men in something like it's it's like to me i feel like it's in their blood like that caveman mentality not all men but majority of them have this i'm the breadwinner i'm this i Mm -hmm. need to be the center of attention i need to be and and it's changed now it's changed yeah mentally for some of them i think they're having a hard time being like wait a minute she makes more money than me wait a minute she's smarter than me wait Wait she wants me to be emotionally available yeah you know like yeah it's it's just that part, I think, is really shaking them a lot. And it's, I, it's interesting that it's shaking them because in the generation that we're in, it's so different than what is. our the men we are around even can see, especially men that have, were raised by single mothers. Yeah, It blows my mind yeah. that they have these mentalities with women when it's like, it's, you kind of saw what your mother went through yeah. with XYZ men or just how hard she worked. So the respect for a woman that has her own it's is weird. just not being received. I also think that there's somehow resentment towards the mother in those situations Baby, for some reason. And the, the thinking is that the she's somehow it's in the show. Yeah, like, <laughs> It's a lot of mommy issues going on. It's a lot of mommy issues, but I think a lot of that stems from like the internalized misogyny of thinking that somehow this woman drove your father away when in reality he just made the choice to leave. And so there's a lot of responsibility placed on women to maintain relationships. Like if you're a single mother, suddenly that's your fault. And they tell us you need to pick better. And then we start picking better. baby. Well, I mean, he was the main one online being like, yeah, hey, well, why did you have the kids? Yeah. Well, maybe I planned to marry him. He started acting wild and it was abusive and I should leave. And yeah. now I want to start over. Yeah. Where you're, he, you know, so. Yeah. And I think we have just come into a space now where it's kind of like you told us to pick better and we are picking better. But picking better means we're not dating as much as we used to. So I'm actually, I haven't dated for, it's been a, a good it's long It's a lot, of, long a lot of my friends that are in yeah. that boat and they are fine. I'm fine with it. Yeah. yeah. Because I just feel like for me, I, I saw this thing online that said, what's scarier, being alone or settling for the wrong person? For me, it's 100% settling for the wrong person. Yeah. Settling in general. I had a wrong baby with the wrong yeah, man. And there like, you it, folks. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just, when I think about who I want to spend my life with, I think about it in terms of like, how am I going to integrate this person into my life in a way where they're not, where I don't feel like I have to compromise any part of myself? Ooh, let right? me tap in on that. Yeah, I literally feel that way. Yeah, and I and, I, and I'm this is I'm in a relationship, but I don't want to say anything like that makes it my relationship's healthy and is is not negative <clears throat> in any way. But I do feel like 
that is one thing I'm noticing when it comes to just men in general. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think that this is stemming from he's a bad man or what. I think it's just a men thing of they menta their mentality is like, I want her to be this, this, this. Mm -hmm. And when you they pick you, you, you might look like what they want you to look like. Mm -hmm. You may be successful because there's a lot of men out there that are very much attracted to successful women. But then they'll get you and want to alter you. Mm hmm I almost water you down a bit mm -hmm. that fits into their narrative. To the box that they wanted you to their be, partner to be in. But that's yeah. even, that's not, not to be man bashing. That's in general with certain people I mean, I'm okay with life. man bashing. I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I'm just saying in general with a job, <laughs> every, certain people that are insecure with who they are, yeah. they will do that to you. Yeah. I've been in situations like that in jobs where 100%, like, the person yeah. that I'm working with um, feels insecure. So they have to water me down mm -hmm. or put me in a box in order for them to feel comfortable around To me. validate their own existence. Yes. When the thing is, if you would just like go heal, mm -hmm. like if you would just try to figure out what in you is so threatened by a successful, smart, like mm -hmm. independent person and then address that, you would be so much happier in the connections that you have. Yeah. So I think about, there's this song by Death Cab for Cutie. I, I always reference this whenever the question of like, would you rather settle or like be with the wrong person like mm -hmm. or be alone comes up. There's a song by Death Cab for Cutie called Kath. And he talks it. about how this woman is basically getting married. She's a woman of a certain age. Mm -hmm. She's getting married. The guy is good enough, but he's not necessarily the guy she wants. And everybody's kind of whispering in the pews, like, what's going to become of them? Like, we know this isn't going to last. But she just wants to get married. And this guy just wants to get married. And so they're going to do it. And I, the idea of something like that, I think, for a lot of women is so terrifying mm. that it completely stops us from engaging with it at all. And so mm -hmm. we'll cut stuff off super early because you just understand once you get to a certain age and once you've experienced enough in life that this is not going to be something that's sustainable long term. So why I would think, I waste my time? I think also women have endured a lot of pain yeah. when it comes to men, a lot of ups and downs, mm -hmm. a lot of disappointment, a lot of heartbreak. And I think once you rebuild yourself and you have to heal, yes. you're not going to jump out there. It's almost yes. like the same mentality of putting your hand on the stove. Yes. How many times do you think I'm going to get burned before I'm like, Baby. I'm good on you? Um, <laughs> Baby. And I think a lot of women have gone through enough to where they're like, I'd rather be alone yeah. and make myself happy than go out there and deal with somebody making me feel in ways that I'm building myself not to feel. And the other thing is you don't even necessarily, because you see all the time, like, a shit about this. My friend's girlfriend just broke up with him and he's six figures and six feet and apartment in the sky and he's got a Mercedes. And it's just kind of like, yeah, but those are not necessarily the things that help you be happy in a relationship. But a lot of men think that. I think this is where the disconnect I've, is I've, coming I've, from. Again, I'm, yes. I'm, I've, run, I've run into those. Because y'all making money and y'all in shape, but y'all don't go to therapy. But and here's that the is crazy the thing. thing. Yeah. They also, like, I saw this on a podcast or something the other day, and I was like, they contradict themselves so much. They talk about how they want us to be this, this, that, and the third. But then when we be that, they like, see, she doing, it's mm -hmm. like, so this guy, he was an athlete. And he was like, um, a lot of women, you don't really got to do stuff for them if you got money. You could just buy them stuff and to keep them quiet. Oh, if she's if yeah. she has everything paid, she's not gonna say nothing half of the time. This dude literally this was is my online nightmare. saying he's a Quite basketball honestly, player. Yeah, this is my nightmare. And he was like, "I'm not even home half of the season. I go do what I do. She at home with the kids. He's doing this. She's at home with the kids. You know, say so she got a house, she got a nice car, she can shop when she wants, she can do whatever she wants. So she ain't tripping. Now, granted, you do heal like Wolverine when a man got money. <laughs> I did tell you that. Whatever he Maybe that little like, cheating scandal be off your you brain know, in a week. In a week. Yes. But I think that that mentality that he thinks that yeah. shows you a lot of where men are mentally when it comes to emotions, mm -hmm. with, it, with showing you how they, what, what togetherness even is. To yeah. him, he like, I don't even need to worry about her. I don't. I'm, I'm going to throw her some paying, money. Yeah. He's paying for her life. And, and so for okay him, that's that. enough. And the thing is, it might not be okay for her, but she might be in a financial situation where I can't really just pick up and leave. Because he does pay for my life. I mean, she has kids. Yeah. So it's a whole different. So you know? it's an entirely different situation. And I think that's another thing that a lot of women are just not willing to do anymore is make themselves financially dependent on a man. When I tell you. Because the abuse be real. The abuse be. that Because that's abusive what he's saying. Like, you know what drove yeah. me to be what I am, honey? Yeah. Watching my father be a whole fool, my mm -hmm. mother. She told me this probably when I was like, I think I was five. She had my backpack on. She grabbed me and said, don't you ever depend on a man. <laughs> 
Don't you ever depend on a man. She I went, said preschool life lessons, baby. I didn't even know what she was talking about. I said, who? She said, you'll learn when you get older. And she was telling me this because she, I think probably about my teen years, she was like, I wish I would have mm-hmm. done what you're doing. Mm-hmm. She was like, I love my kids. I'm happy. She was like, but I never thought about what I wanted for me. Yep. I, I I married your father. He had majority of the money he was doing. She's like, but when I found out he was cheating and had a whole nother family, mm-hmm. when I wanted to walk away, I had to walk away with nothing. Yep. I didn't have a job. I didn't have a car. I didn't have anything. And, and she's like, and you that, know what he did? Yeah. He made sure that I knew that I didn't have anything. Yep. That was the argument. And a lot of men hate that women now are successful. So when we do walk away, it's like, we don't need you for nothing. We don't need you. And the thing is, I think enough of us have gone through the thing where you were in a situation where you kind of like tried to make a square, a circle fit into a square or a square mm-hmm. fit, whatever that saying is. Yeah, I know what you mean. You tried to do that and it didn't work out and you ended up depleting so much of your energy, draining, draining so much of yourself. your life force, trying to fit yourself into this relationship. And it ends up being another thing that you have to heal from. And so for us, the... The idea is just let me make sure that I am being the best version of who I can be. Mm -hmm. So when the right person comes along, I'm ready. But I'm just not about to entertain the wrong people. It's just not going to happen. I also think for me, it's it's like, I don't know if you've ever experienced this. But you ever go on a date or you started dating somebody and they start reminding you of a situation that you've already experienced mm-hmm. and you're like, he got one more time to show up like the other dude. And he I don't even be having one more time, baby. You really get like, <laughs> I'll give you one more time to make sure you, because I'll point it out to you and be like, mm, I'm not really feeling this. You know what? You're right. Let me not and be. Then, yeah. I right. try to give yeah. them at least, you know, you're the right. benefit of the doubt. Because I think even for myself, I'm not perfect. So I would mm-hmm. want somebody to be like point out something that I've done wrong and give me the opportunity to correct address, it or yes. address it. So I try to do that. But if you do it too often, immediately in my mind, I'm about to start like canceling you out. Well, yeah. So Because I'm like, I'm not taking myself. I ended a relationship down that road. Um, a couple years ago for that very same reason. Yeah. Because I kept, I probably had the same conversation two or three times. And, and you for get me, triggered. Like, yeah. have you ever dated a man that was, I've never been like physically abused, but it's a lot of mental abusive dudes yeah. outside that find ways to say things to, to lower mm-hmm. your self-esteem or to make you feel dumb or to make you feel like you're always wrong. So mm-hmm. you can always, it. it's a manipulative tactic that I picked up on men that they do that when I pick it up, it pisses me off. Because mm-hmm. it's like this thing they do to try to make you feel small or give themselves some superior superior superiority yeah. yeah and it's just like when i catch that i'll be like all right darnell mm-hmm. you got one more time <laughs> and you're gonna find yeah. yourself <laughs> i just don't i don't think you're gonna be single you're gonna find yourself i didn't told you you're gonna be single calling me and then they're gonna be they cuss you out because they mad because you dumped them what is that yeah i don't know rejection so this is why we would rather be in the forest with a bear because when oh, men face thing, yo. yeah when men face rejection a lot of times it is uh, to our physical or emotional detriment. Like we end up having to deal with the rage that they feel that we did not act or like become who they felt like we wanted them to become. Girl. I remember I stopped talking to a guy and he was mad. He was like, I wouldn't have spent all this money on you. And it's just kind of like, what are you talking about? We was in a relationship. We spent money on each other. The fuck? Who says that? Who says that? You ever seen that movie where they kick the man off the little hill and he fall into the abyss? Girl, what, what was that? <laughs> that three hundred? Uh, like, like, what are we talking about? Three hundred? Yeah, like, oh my god! Literally, <laughs> when somebody see you to say that to me, I love wow. that. <laughs> Kick him right off. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? So though? you and was I investing think, in me? You were I'm investing not even in a person. Me. And okay. I think the crazy thing is, like, you get into a relationship with someone, and this is what I mean when people need to go out and touch grass, <laughs> because you're online and you're constantly being fed the rhetoric of what do you bring to the table? What are you worth? Like. What, why should I have to spend money to take you on a date? You don't. But also, you have to understand that there are certain women who are okay with the bare minimum and mm-hmm. certain women who are not okay with the bare minimum. And if you want to date the women who are not okay with the bare minimum, you're going to have to step your shit up. Yeah. And we're going to circle back to the bear thing, but let me pop yeah. jump in on what you're saying. A lot of men think they ready for a bad bitch. Uh-huh. I'm going to say that again. A lot of men think they ready for a bad bitch. They don't be they ready. Not. They no. not. And I think a lot of times, too, they don't want to admit it to themselves, but you way out of your league. Mm-hmm. You way out of your league. And they, you could tell when a man knows he's way out of his league. Yes. Of course you're going to reach high. Who don't? Mm-hmm. Who don't want to reach high? Who don't want to see the biggest beautiful butterfly in the room and be yes. like, let me get that That's one. That's my baby. I want that one. Yeah. You get it, though, and now you can't handle it. A yeah. lot of them can't handle it, A, because if you see that supply butterfly, 
everybody think that's a fly mm-hmm. butterfly. Is your confidence up enough to know everywhere you go, everybody going to be peeping at her? Complimenting her on what she looks like. Complimenting her. You, you see know, you go to the bathroom, yeah. all of a sudden, now it's two or three. She ain't even fa- like giving them energy, but now they yeah. talking to her. It's a lot of men that can't handle that. And that turns into either physical or mental abuse. Because now they're like, I got to I gotta make her sm- I gotta make her feel small. Mm-hmm. She so out she fat thinking big, bitch, and you yes. got to bring it down small. I need this confidence to be reduced but significantly. But a lot of guys yes. want this. Yeah. Like, uh, but, and the rap music make them think that. Drake got the, the boys out here thinking they need to chase a certain type that they can't afford, A, or they, they mentally aren't ready for. I, just, like, I think the funny thing is Drake... With all his money, can't afford none of the women that he he's aware to that he can't mentally. afford them. I don't think like, Drake's dumb. He literally is just everyone is out of his league, and it he is says so it in the song. Yeah, he, he's a terrible person walking, and women yeah. just allow it. That's that's Drake. That's a whole <laughs> nother. Yeah, yeah, that's insane another thing. to me. But to piggyback on what you were saying about there's a video, you guys. I'm a, I kind of want to edit it into our clip so everybody can know. Okay. Um, there's a video streaming all around uh, on TikTok and Instagram where women are asking other women or whoever, somebody's asking, if you'd rather be trapped in the woods with a bear or a man. A and bear. And so far- It's going to be a bear for me. Women are picking the bear. Yeah. My answer when Alicia asked me randomly, because I didn't even see the, the video yet, was like, <laughs> I'm going to pick the man because I'll kill him if he pulls. <laughs> like, no, I'm nuts. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that was my original answer. I think you asked me and you looked at me like, huh? I was like, yeah. oh, I picked a man because if he pull up, I'm going to just go ahead and end yeah. him. But you said it was going to be a sport. <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is fun for me. Like, we hunting each other in this forest. Like, I'm out here on some bullshit too. <laughs> Where you at, homie? Like, I'm trying to scare him. But come I, out, come out wherever you are. <laughs> literally, don't play with me. Um, I, I think that a lot of women are saying bear now that I'm learning a bear's yeah. personality. Cause at first I was like, no, nah, I don't want to be out in the woods with yeah. one bear. But this woman asked a man uh if he would be safe with his daughter being left in the woods with a man or a bear. And a man actually said, said a, bear, a bear. Which yeah. I just think I think the crazy thing about this whole entire conversation is when you talk to men about like relationships and when you talk to them about abuse they will say they do not know men who do this kind of stuff mm-hmm. and uh, it just y'all we're over exaggerating and yeah. we're putting 20 on 10 but then and if we're you, not taking accountability for yes, ourselves but then if you mm. ask a man if he want to place his child in the forest with a bear or another man the immediate answer and i mean there is no time for thought on this the gut reaction is a bear mm-hmm. and you have to ask yourself where is the cognitive the dissonance man said- here she, my, she could possibly scare the bear, bear away. I'm not sure what a man would do. A man. Like, y'all that. know that you're toxic. I just feel and he like. Was, and it wasn't like she caught him off guard. And he she was did like, it. Uh, he was chilling in his he bed. He was his, chilling, <laughs> eating. Now eating. he was eating. And I feel like he, he said, no. his gut reaction was a bear. But I think the crazy thing is, like, we're constantly saying, hey, these are issues that need to be rectified. And when it comes to, like, pointing it out on a one-to-one basis Mm -hmm. the answer is always we need to take accountability what are y'all doing and we're not that bad it's not that bad when the truth of the matter is like you motherfuckers would rather leave your child in the forest with a bear a wild animal than one of your own yeah that speaks volumes to the like about what we're dealing with here yeah yeah like i think it validates for so many people no we're not over exaggerating anything the circumstances of relationships and dating are just bad that and i also think with men they don't grow the same way we do unfortunately women and they haven't had to to. yeah but i i think for us for example when a woman is trying to better herself or take accountability let's just go ahead and say that i'm not saying all women are perfect there are things about myself that i had to learn over time about my dating habits about how i approach things about the things i do like a lot of different things but the fact that i took the time to do that and go through that for years okay you you know i think it's harder for me to hear somebody be like you're not taking accountability it's like i've taken the time men you don't really hear a lot of guys like having meetings of accountability or having meetings to heal men take have groups where they discuss the things they like and the things they want and the things they dislike sports no i'm saying I've, i've had conversations with men if you ask them you know how they feel like you know if you and i have a conversation right about mm-hmm. a relationship you're gonna be like 
What I need emotionally is this. Yeah. What I want out of a relationship is this. How I need to yeah. feel down the line is this. Yes. I want kids because you sit with a man, he immediately gonna, not going to come into any of that with himself. Mm -hmm. Not all men, some. I'm saying he's going to say, well, I know I don't want to be a with a woman that yeah. I know I don't want. They only it know what they don't want and on, what they do want, but they happens, haven't taken. Yeah. You know, you see the difference? Yes. And so, so mm -hmm. it's funny that you say this. This happens on dating apps where if you are on the apps, there's like these little prompts that you can kind of tell your <laughs> tell about yourself where yes. you can it'll ask you a question like a typical Sunday for me looks like dot 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 and then you what write a response. What eliminates a lot of y'all sometimes. This is what eliminates <laughs> a lot of y'all. And a lot of men will use this space to talk about what they don't want. If you don't work out, if you uh don't have your own this, if you then you need to just just swipe left and it's just like, wow, you've just wasted this very precious space. To, to not say, not positive say positive anything positive, about yeah, yourself. about it's... yourself, but to denigrate women who you don't feel like are on your level. And the thing is this, it's okay if you don't want to date those kind of women, don't date them. It's fine. But you, but you don't need to, to use that. Thing. Yeah. You don't got to wear a t-shirt. You don't need to use this very precious little bit of space that you have to give us an uh, insight into who yeah. you are to degrade women who are not what you want. Yeah. Because now the women who are what you want are not interested because now we're looking at you like, oh, he's got he's issues. gross. He's yeah, he's toxic. Through, he's yes. been through something that obviously he hasn't addressed with himself because yes. he's still talking about it. It's the same thing how men say, oh, well, she's still not over such and such if she's still talking about it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. This is the I have so many conversations with male comics all the time with these, and it's like they, it's like their brain don't understand what I'm saying to them. Mm -hmm. But I'd be like, you see how I just said and told you how what I want, how I feel, how I love, mm -hmm. and all you did was tell me what well, I'm not gonna deal with. Mm -hmm. I don't want, and then she better not. It's a you, you, you mentality. Mm -hmm. When I was in anger management, that was the number one thing my anger management uh, therapist told me. She was like, you will never get far if you always come to people with the pointing the finger mm -hmm. mentality. If you talk to someone and say, you always, you always, I'm sick of you. She was like, mm -hmm. that's attacking. Mm -hmm. You have to figure out another way to speak to someone and let them know how you yep. feel without attacking them and saying, you do this all the time. You, you, you is putting someone down. If yeah. you use another language or another word pattern to say, I feel. Yes. That simple. You see how that went? Yes. I, I feel that. I need. If he would have said on his profile, I feel that certain women, <laughs> I don't want that. It, it would, it, even though it would have still been annoying to yeah. me, and I still would have swiped away. Yeah. It's, at least it wouldn't sound like you got issues or you angry. And yeah. Because y'all be coming off mad angry. It's giving... The switcheroo of what men used to say about women about like what 10 years ago, they was like, all women are upset and they just mad outside. Y'all literally outside with a lace front on, yeah. patting it and is mad. <laughs> Y'all yes. outside the club, like, I'm sick of these hoes. Like, what can the man say? <laughs> it's giving, it's giving, y'all got a snap body suit on. It's giving, I gotta unsnap you to get to the dick. It's giving bad bitch energy. It's giving bad not, But it's not honestly, like I'm tired. Yeah. A lot of men are acting like that. They acting like bad They bitches. tapping in yeah. on bad bitch energy. Yeah. And this this is why we'd rather be out there with the bear. He not yes. he not on that. He not on that, baby. That when bear, I say no, he finna be like, all right. He finna be like, damn, this was rude he as He not fuck. finna run over exactly. and be like, you, that's why you bald here. <laughs> <laughs> that's why you ugly. He not finna say that. He's he not gonna not, do that. He's, he's gonna, gonna do take it. that rejection and exit stage and left. Ahead. And it would be so much easier, I think, in general for us to coexist if we were both doing yeah. the work. It's like, called you gotta look yeah. within. And a lot of men don't. And that yeah. and I swear to God, I run into this all the time. It's just they think looking within is looking outward and saying, I don't want that. Yeah. I don't like women like her. She's this. Yeah. She's you're labeling us without even taking like why why do I attract that? You yeah. didn't even take I had those moments. I've had plenty of moments. I had a moment where I had to really like sit with myself because I constantly attract clingy Girl. men like for some reason i will attract somebody and we'll go on a date and then you are suddenly like you're just a barnacle around my neck like mm -hmm. i'm tired of you already why are you never letting me so get clingy yes yeah. and i had to really like figure out okay why the fuck do i keep attracting guys like this mm -hmm. and it was because i have a very different attachment style so i am a detached attachment style type mm -hmm. of person like I just I struggle to open up to people mm -hmm. and so I can be warm but I'm not necessarily one of those people that we gonna go on one date and I'm gonna see my life with you like yeah. I, I I struggle with that and I think a lot of times 
this is kind of like going to segue into a different point, but I wonder sometimes if men say, okay, this girl checks these boxes. I don't necessarily feel the chemical mm -hmm. attraction, but the boxes are checked. So I'm going to just pursue her heavy and see if I can make her the one. I've heard this is, I'm, again, I'm not saying for all men, but I remember a long time ago, I worked at this restaurant and this guy, I don't know how we got in the conversation, but he was just like, you know, when a man's ready to get married, he just gets married. When he he it doesn't he rarely that's marries what Miranda the woman. on Sex in the City said. Yeah, yeah he's like he, they he like rarely Beyond. marries the woman that he was in love with, and he like you know he's like nine yes. times out of ten the woman he was in love with he messed that up. Yes. So now when she he's ready you. to get yeah. yeah you're blocked. So like yeah. now when you're ready to get married, it's like who whatever woman's in his life mm -hmm. that checks basic boxes he'll just marry her and yep. i was like really he was like yeah you you can't make a man marry you or you can't look at a man as that's your husband he has to just want to be gotta, ready to get yeah married, and he'll choose whoever is around you know to marry and i'm like that's disgusting and so i think <laughs> that's where the another disconnect for us is coming in though is because we don't want to settle and so i think a lot of times what is happening and this is for women specifically who are settling you'll Say you make like a 30 point checklist. These are the things I want out of my guy. Like this is my ideal man. And right. then you meet a man with 15 of the 30 things on the checklist. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will say, you know what? 15 things is a lot. I'm going to roll with this and see how it goes. But the problem with rolling with a guy who only checks half of your boxes is that you're going to be so much more annoyed with him for the insignificant shit, him leaving the toilet seat up, him not like making the bed in the morning. Those are the things, those little insignificant things are really going to infuriate you. I get a he's not your guy. You, I feel like, and this is, I think we talked about this over the phone. This is how I got into the last, that we talked about this. Yeah. Um, my last situation, um, it wasn't that, well, let me start it this way. I'm the type of woman where I don't like to casually date. I feel like I'm past that part of my life. And like, if I'm in a, I'm not trying to be relationship type of mode, I'm going to just hang out with me. I'm not yeah. going to casually date. But when I do start dating, I am in this age now where I'm like, I'm dating for this to go long term, mm -hmm. for this to turn into a possibly a marriage. So when you are going on dates with me, I'm pretty much, yeah, I'm interviewing you to see if you a husband candidate for the future or whatever. Um, but I got into my last situation because I was like, friends and myself was thinking nobody's going to be perfect. You're not going to find anybody who's going to check all of your boxes. So how do you go about what to accept and what not to accept? Now, obviously I didn't accept abuse or I didn't accept, you know, things that were negative towards me, but I did bypass certain things that a person didn't have because some of their pros outweighed the cons. Yeah. But things like the toilet and the bed, like, I feel like I catch that shit now. <laughs> yeah, but those aren't deal breakers now because you actually like who you're with, right? Right. Right. So he's checking a lot more boxes than probably... Say right, if, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, so... That's the part that was hard for me. Yeah. It was like, how do you go about dating now? Because now there is so much shit out there mm -hmm. and you deal with so much... Like for me, there was a there was like a... I think right after my last breakup, this was like last year, the year before last, and I was out dating, honey... When you go on a whole bunch, you 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 go say let's be with me, because by the time you get through all the BS that ain't even got nothing to do with a toilet seat, you're gonna be like, I'm never gonna find half. So I think so. How do you how do you go about that for both genders now? What is because you're never gonna find a perfect person. I I personally feel like now in the relationship I'm in, I'm very happy. But I I'm, I told my mother this today. I'm learning. That there are some things that I'm gonna have to fight for, and some mm -hmm. things I'm gonna have to just be like, this Let is this of. person, yeah. And I have to find a way for this to work and for me instead yeah. of like beating them down on that particular yes. thing. But I don't. So I think when people hear checks boxes, they're thinking of uh, like these insurmountable goals, these things okay. that are just not attainable, and they right. absolutely are attainable. Like when I look at, I looked at my list recently because I have a list. Um, <laughs> Go down the things that I, have I a list. Yeah. wanted out of a husband. Yes, I have a, a list of things that I want out of a, a husband. And on the list is compassionate, like kind to me, kind to his family, um, supportive, mm -hmm. like yeah. not emotionally manipulative, emotionally yeah. available. These available. are the things on the list. Yeah. The list is not 
six figures, that would be nice. Like, it's not seven figures, would actually be nice. Yeah, <laughs> nowadays, honey, you're gonna need about it's seven. A, or it's more. expensive out here, but um, it's it's not a bunch of like material things. Yeah. And I think the thing that happens with a lot of people is you write this list of what you want and you get 15 of the 30. And uh, 10 years into the relationship, you're wondering why you're kind of unhappy. And it's because you compromised half of your list because yeah, the yeah. things that you put on your list are actually really important to you. And so I, I remember when I was working in luxury retail during the holidays, the guys would come in and get wi- uh, bags for their wives and girlfriends. Right. And uh, the wife would explicitly say, I want a red bag or I want a pink bag. Mm-hmm. And we wouldn't have a red or a pink bag. And the husband would say, OK, well, just give me an orange bag or just give me a green bag, whatever you got. And so she got a bag because he just needed to give her something, Mm -hmm. but it's not the bag she wanted. A lot of times people are just in a relationship with somebody who checks 15 of the 30 boxes Mm -hmm. because they want to have someone. Oh, yeah. Now that, I mean, I don't know what dating like is anywhere else, but in LA, honey. Oh, you in the, it's the survival of the fittest. It is. In but the you can the insecurity of things I, here in LA, you will get a lot of that. Let me, let me just say this though. You can get what you want is the point. No, I mean like yeah. people that are just being with you because they can't be alone. Yeah. LA is And I think that. that's what is happening is a lot of people are writing their list and they get half of the things on the list and they settle for that because they don't think they can get the full list. They now, think it's I'll too big of an this, ask. This is with my things coming, bringing us back to the list. There are things on my list that I am not bending on. You yes. have to have you a, have to have a, a like top, yes. at least five or six that are non deal breakers. Because yeah. you literally, honestly, this is just me. I feel like you could be with somebody for ten years and be like, I'm just not feeling this shit no more. Yes. Like, you could hundred percent. It ain't necessarily yeah. about your list. Yeah. That's just me. But I feel like no, that's one hundred percent. Be over yeah. now, or you just, or you could just you be just like, grown out of it. Eh, I'm yeah, grown out of this. I want to yeah. do something else in my life. Yeah. But I feel like there are certain things that you have to have on mm-hmm. that list, like. Okay, yeah, he may not be tall or he may not have six figures, but there, there, are, whatever is important to you, he better have at least five of those. Yeah. Or you finna be. But I caught think out the here thing is, like, weird. we looking at a list and we're thinking that the, the stuff that we're putting on it is not important. Every single thing you put on your list uh, if it's all of it important. Is, I'm yeah. just saying, like, what is this? Like, for example, I'll give you this. I think on my list was um, tall. <laughs> Yeah. Taller than me. Yeah. Or something like that. Uh, I'm talking about the mediocre stuff. Like the emotional part was like, he better have that. Those are deal breakers. He better be emotionally available. Um, Can he have good communicate? Like important parts. Mm -hmm. Like not the parts about the money. And so that's what my list looks like. Yes. 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 Yeah. We want that. We want that. But I think. But if he ain't emotionally available. It's not going to work. Because you have to. It's not going to do it. You got to think about what it is long term. So now I got this fucking green bag. And this green bag is great. And I'm going to wear this with a lot of outfits and I'm going to take it on vacation. But I honestly still need a red bag. Yeah. I still need the other 15 things on my list. And so people will write out their manifestations for what they want in a partner and they don't wait. You have to wait. You have to be confident enough and trust in God and trust in the universe enough that your like wish for your partner will be provided because it will. Mm -hmm. Like you might have to wait a little bit longer than you want it to wait. But it will be Trust provided. Me, it sucks. Especially it when you sucks. think of your husband. Ah! Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was super dumb. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. But we all be that though. Baby, we all be floor, that. Her whole we soul all out. be that. I and absolutely then go look at him and be like, not crying of an ugly man. Like, That's crazy. but you you absolutely <laughs> go through a, a phase where you be with a motherfucker and you think this is who you're gonna be with. And then suddenly your eyes are open and you're like, oh my God, thank God I did not get married to the person I thought I wanted to marry. No, you know what my problem was? And maybe I'm a late bloomer. I think in my mind, I kept thinking yeah, every relationship you have you learn something about yourself mm-hmm. you upgrade that you make that better you'll be rewarded with someone that's just like that whoop <laughs> boop, boop, wrong um you literally <laughs> like because that's how dumb i was i was like oh i'm better now so i'm gonna attract better now and i and i had this dumb mentality of oh if i keep telling him he's gonna make it better yeah. he's gonna change it and then he don't and then you be somewhere burn up and like yeah. you got to keep in mind like like I said earlier you could tell somebody I don't like this this is the boundary I'm setting and give them a benefit of the doctor change because you can't change it overnight so if it's a bad habit for them give them the amount of time that you can handle but there's a possibility where you have to check yourself and be like oh he ain't it and yeah. tap out that yeah. was my problem Yes, I would stay with dudes constantly trying to make them be that other thing that was on my list and they kept 
saying okay, okay, and never doing that because they don't have and the capacity I would stick to. Yeah, there because I'm like, well, he does have all these things. Yes. Maybe I'm tripping. And that what you told me once, buyer's remorse. Mm-hmm. Baby girl, put me on that. Now. <laughs> like every time I would have a moment with this man, I would be like, you got buyer's remorse, bitch. You got yes. you got to get out of here. I but think like, a lot of people who are in long term relationships, though, people who got married in their early twenties, I wonder if a lot of them do have buyer's remorse because yeah. the person that you are at 21. I don't even know who that girl was. Yeah. At 39, I'm a completely different person. Yeah. And so if I were still trying to make the relationship that I was in at that age work mm-hmm. at this age, I would be miserable. Yeah. Because we're not compatible at this oh, age. Oh, honey. I be thinking about certain men that I swear to God. That yes. He's my man. This I was the one. God, I love he him. was the one. Maybe I would have left. He was never the one. He was yes. Never, it was never going to be was, you. It was, it was never, never going to be you. Gonna be you. <laughs> and the thing is, the universe will make it. Like, you'll keep trying to press something, and the universe will get so tired of you trying to press a situation that is not for they you. They're throw you that down. It on will the just, and yes. They're going to rip the shit to shreds. Like, bitch, we tried to tell you. Okay. And so at the end of the day, the lesson for you has to when be. When the red flags be flagging. Yes. When the red flags, so when it's a flag on the play, bitch, exit the field. It's okay. Exit stage left. Exit stage <laughs> left. And I think we just be hanging on to shit. This is how you end up in a loveless marriage. And, and that's people why be like, men are upset though. Yes. Now, honey, you have women that are like, oh, so you're not going to. <laughs> yeah. Okay, go. cool. Got And got she's it. I'm, outside I'm good. the next day cute and doing something yes. else. Yes. And that was never the that case. That was never the case. We used to sit up in our room and fucking write love letters and cry about it. And uh, like, I don't think our generation was not so much. I will say that I remember that for like my mom and my aunts and you know, I've I've seen a lot. Like for the women in my family, I think that also was a really strong reason of why I was very driven in my career and I never had children. And men were like last on my list. Mm-hmm. It was like, I want to be great and successful in my own right. And a lot of that had to do with what I saw. I saw some of my aunts, you know, go through things with their husbands, them cheating on them and mm-hmm. having kids on and them and them working that out, but not understanding that. And my mom going through things with my dad and several other men after that. Yeah. And then for my own experience, like as you get older, one thing I will give y'all, as you get older, you really gonna see men for who they are. And that's where I'm at with it. I'm at a space now where I was telling my mom today, I'm like, I'm too woke. Um, <laughs> I'm in a space now where I'm not going to argue with you to make you better. Mm-hmm. I'm going to look you dead in the eye and be like, oh, this him. Mm-hmm. It's either I'm going to figure out a way to make this work for me or I'm going to have to exit stage left. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not I'm not at an age now where I'm trying to make nobody be better because I got to make me better. Yeah. It's on you to make you be better. It's on you to make you it's be better. It's on you. And when I'm constantly trying to point out for you that these are the things that I need to exist comfortably and happily in this space and you're not receptive to that. I'm, I'm going to have to go. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of men now, I want them to step up and admit, and this is something I wish we, why we, this is, I want to bring uh, other men to talk about this too. Yeah. I should. feel yeah. like what's with the, you got all these requirements of what you want from women, but when you get them, it seems as if all you want is for her to sleep with you, do your laundry, <laughs> cook your food. You want a sex worker and a maid. And be there. Yeah. Whenever you need her. Yeah. But it's like, like, I don't know. Like, I'm being for real. Like, some men I've dated, and I had one actually say this to me. I remember we were in a debate about something about needs or something, and somehow he said something to me. I just need you to be there. Huh? Mm-hmm. It was like, we not even, you just need me to be around? Like, you like, just want me to hang out? It reminded me, like, actually, of Love and Basketball. People always talk about Love and Basketball as this, like, great love story, but he really played in her face. Hard. And I just really can't, like, I love the movie, and I'm gonna watch it when it's on TV, but also, like, this is I'm not watching. a great love story. Oh. Because he really was like, you forgot to be there. Uh, motherfucker, I have curfew. 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 I'm here on a scholarship. It's not always about it's you. It's not about you. She has a career, We can too. actually go back to my room. And have this conversation and you're so like You want her to up. drop everything in her life yes. and her career for you. For you. Like, but what that's the how fuck? they think. That's, a lot of them yeah. really do think Maybe because they didn't like got me kind of tight because they really be trying to pos- position this movie as like this great American Baby, love story. Baby, how about every love story is a setup? As Honestly, you get older, you're gonna be looking about, at Sex in the City like Oh, oh Sex in the God, City is a nightmare. But I also like hate Carrie. Carrie was really Oh my god, Carrie was at the end of the day though. Biggs was a terrible man. Big was a terrible man, but Carrie, why do you keep tying yourself in knots for this man who clearly we does all not have give done that before? You? We have, and I honestly like Sex in the City. We could have a whole episode on this because it Pretty really much. drives but me that, nuts. But have you watched thing, the Notebook? I, the Sex Notebook, the Love None Jones. None of the love stories are positive. baby. Love Jones, he stole her baby boy. He's baby boy was always <laughs> it's a, a, it's a it's We a always knew baby. Film. But when I watched Love Jones as a, an adult, he got her number. 
her address actually off a check that she wrote at a record store and then showed up to her home. Where do I start? You see, like, you do see you what understand we're trying to say? <laughs> that if if a man did this to me right now, I would call the police baby. so fucking. Are you out of your fucking mind? Somehow he's on the news dead. Dead. Because why have you showed up at my place? And the thing is, she told him no. So when I look at like our old school love stories, I just kind of be None like, none of them are oh, good. Okay, this was really out of pocket. I we don't were know. delusional. You yeah. can go to Disney right now and yeah. watch <laughs> The Little Mermaid was yeah. a setup as well. But it's Beauty and the Beast. Out here. Beauty and the Beast, like, you really turned this 16 year old into a beast because he was mean. That is just what 16 year olds are. <laughs> All I'm saying this, is. Y'all. Okay, I'm sorry. We've got no. no it's, <laughs> but it's true, though. But even when you watch Baby Boy, okay, <laughs> Baby Boy was a horror film for me. It was. Because it was 100%. just like, she's showcasing to you that she loves you. She's trying to be a good mother to your kid. You live at your mama house. You also, the whole movie was traumatizing because when I watched it as an adult, I'm like, not Jody rode a bike. A bike. The whole movie. You don't notice that when you ain't healed. When you yeah. heal as a woman and watch the movie, you like- He was using like, her Honda Accord. I think that's what she had. And told her to her face. I messed with her, but I did. Yeah. I just, I literally can't. With baby Still boy, sleeping with the baby mama. You rode a bike the whole thing. You didn't movie, have a job. Yeah. You were selling dresses. I hated this You movie. were a bum. Literally. <laughs> Like he don't such love a me fucking no bum when she ass. Says that, yeah, we've all been there. Yeah, but that let's circle back. That is what they're looking for. They miss mm-hmm. those type of being women, able lady. to be that toxic and that abusive. And I've that had men. I remember I had a boyfriend say to me one time. Uh, I don't know how we got on it. It was an ex of mine. He said something to me. I was telling him about something I had did. It was a joke. I think I was like, oh, back when I was younger, I, I keep cars or something like that. He was like, oh, what do I got to do to get you to act that crazy over me? And when he said that, I looked at him and I was like, ugh, the insecurity is everywhere. Yeah. It's like you, some, but some men want that. They want to get you to a level of how crazy can they get you to go to feel important. And we're no longer doing that. So a lot of men are, it's like, it's almost like gremlins. Like they, we starving them out outside. <laughs> It's like they getting starved. That's why they look so bad don't when you see them Don't feed the troll. It's like don't feed them after they not getting fed. They look, you know, I'm just yeah. saying they, they, they're they dying outside. Yeah, dying and on the vibe, baby. And it's because they can't get you to be going crazy over them while they still messing with this girl. Now, there, I'm not saying there aren't some situations like that still going on. But like you said earlier, mm-hmm. you were like, there's some women that's going to let you do this. There's some women that are going to let you do it. And, and yeah. I think just as we are on the trajectory of like living out our dreams and having our own money and Mm -hmm. making our own way in the world, the people that we invite into our space really need to compliment it in every way Mm -hmm. or they don't need to be a part of it. Mm -hmm. And so women are doing this with relationships, with friendships, with family even because we have set boundaries with family that I think a lot of men struggle to set. We mm-hmm. have set boundaries in friendships that I think men struggle to set. Yeah, like you lot. constantly hear about how there's no mental health support for men. Nobody cares what men are going through. Y'all need to talk to each other. Yeah. I think a lot of times what happens is we. Now I'm going to go ahead and say no to that because um, they're not they're not going to give the best advice. <laughs> they're not going to give the best advice. But the thing <laughs> they need is. They to talk this, to each other and still come out dumb. They, just... they could go to therapy. But also I think this crazy. We talk to each other about a lot of shit. And help each other get through things. But I think women might be smarter. We are, 100%. We're the best. Um, But there's a learning curve to it, right? And there needs to be space amongst men to talk about things that they're going through mentally, emotionally, financially even. Mm -hmm. And uh, them be encouraged and heard and validated and listened to. And the onus of managing the weight of your emotions not being placed on the woman you're in a relationship with. Yeah. Like I cannot be the only person you're talking to about the things that you go through right. because it's too much for me to handle yeah. on top of what else I'm handling in the relationship. Yeah. Like when you think about women, we have certain friends and family members that we go to for certain things. Yeah. We we disperse the shit out mm-hmm. because we're going through a lot. Everybody's going through so much shit. Like but you can't you, just play the game. You can't just play the game. You can't they, just they be like, I'm going to play the game and fix. <laughs> no, you can't be Boy, one of them people who trauma dumping on one person all the time. You got to dump your trauma in different pots. Yeah. Like it's certain people that are in your life for certain things and you connect with them in one way or another about these specific things. You need to have a couple different people that you yeah. can do that with. And and I and that's that's very true. They yeah. have to have a couple of different people, and I think choose those people wisely. Yes, for sure. Um, don't choose any man who's outside that don't have. Like I would say for a man, you should have a friend who's married, 
You know, you should have a friend who's married. And you should have faithful. an actual, yeah, and faithful. And faithful. And have an actual therapist. And then have a friend who's, uh, you know, someone who works out or sing single, but they have a good perspective on their single lifestyle. Like, you need good people in your circle. Mm-hmm. Like, for me, like you were saying earlier, I cut out a lot of friends in my life that weren't serving who mm-hmm. I am now. Like, as a woman now, I'm not doing certain things. Yep. So, I can't hang around or talk to and I've had friends of mine say to me like I don't take you know advice from my single girlfriends when I'm married like I, I've heard women say that I've had a friend say I don't take advice from single women for my life because I'm married and I and I, I respect that bitch I'm not married so maybe you need to talk to the other girls and let them know I, I might not be the one I, I don't take that personally girl I don't do take you. it personally but I think the That's idea like, that, great let's talk about something else I Cheers, think that um. that is internalized misogyny I'm gonna be real I mean, about my, that one of my yeah. home girls told me that one time no it I is now, it's, granted, it's internalized later, misogyny I had to check her about something because she was being bitchy right but let me just parse this out no, right quick though because I need for people to understand that when we are invalidating a woman's opinion about something or saying that she cannot possibly have a good perspective on it because she single that is internalized misogyny you it's have also insecure and weird it's insecurity but you have internalized the ideology that single women are incapable of valuing a relationship and incapable of giving you like pertinent advice and listening to you and validating what you're experiencing and helping you navigate a sticky situation in your marriage and all- every single woman ain't trying to like yeah. disrupt your flow and get you to get a divorce right single women and her perspective who, might literally her perspective is valuable yeah. yeah and your friends hopefully for a reason because you value her opinion and you like understand where she's coming from but also as a single person I have like 10 married friends and we talk about the stuff that goes on in their relationships we are supportive of each other yeah. in general. I and want also, your. It's an opinion. It's an opinion, you but really also your single down. girlfriends want your marriage to succeed. So yeah. if they are real friends, any advice that they're giving you, unless you're in an abusive situation, mm-hmm. any advice that you're getting from a single girlfriend is going to be aligned with the success of your marriage. Mm-hmm. Nobody who is a single friend is advising a married woman to leave their husband or do something that would alienate the bonds of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I think that that is the thinking around married women saying, I don't talk to my single friends about my marriage. You don't talk to your single friends about your marriage because you insecure and because y'all don't value your single friend's opinion. And that's someone's perspective. Yeah. That also triggers into what we're talking about. Like, I think that men don't respect women's perspectives of Mm -hmm. things. And that's also causing a lot of friction between the genders Mm -hmm. because it's just like that. That's the same thing with you. Like you might agree with one presidential candidate but that's just you that mm-hmm. don't make you a bad person that's what you want well i make i i <laughs> me this is how i roll i don't I, for me it's hey do you if you like it i love it if you a trump supporter i'm not rocking with you right but ever, ever. you i'm not gonna hate you you finna i'm gonna hate life. you but we're not gonna be friends. i'm not gonna be outside you're like yeah. come on like we're not finna we're not gonna be I'm friends not, like i'm not gonna fight you about it but we're never gonna speak to each other again and, yeah but that's and i'm okay thing, with that yeah. why can't men just accept that certain yeah. women women don't want them yeah and not have to throw shots or make mm-hmm. them feel like you're dumb for not mm-hmm. like because i feel like that's what i'm seeing now it's like when women say no or they say i'm not dealing with or i don't want to it's then well you that's me you know What's or up? it's what i hate seeing so much on tiktok women out here talking about they don't want kids they talking about they don't want oh you want kids you want them not, yeah. not, why why are you yelling at us well why don't you want kids i think that's the question that but why be are you asked. so concerned why are you so mad but also why don't you want kids because if you start asking women why they don't want kids you would uncover a mountain of truth there are a myriad well, of clearly reasons that why man, nobody wants out of parents. <laughs> 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 he wasn't on but uh, yeah i mean yeah but that's the thing that's the normal mentality yes. of yes asking i, I love remember, that you said that yeah because he could just normal he could be like why don't what happened yeah they don't do that they just get immediately defensive yeah immediately angry and immediately or tell you, put you down. you should have kids you would be such a great mom i have no doubt i would be a great mom yeah i have no doubt you would be a great mom I'm, but at the end of the day so <laughs> exactly like i'm an amazing dog mother but at the end of the day the stars have not aligned yet for me to comfortably parent yeah and i just am not mentally in a space where I feel like, yes, I'm going to just do it by myself. Because now no desire to do that. More of the, less of the, I want to be a mother and I can't wait to have a kid. More of the, do I want to be attached to this man for the rest of my life? Yes. I think more women are thinking that. Yes. And so I think it brings me to another point. (laughs) 
Because sometimes y'all be ugly and we want to see you forever. No, I'm, just <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm being silly. But not, it, it, literally, I think a lot of women, I, I know I've thought that way. Yes. It wasn't really just like, I don't want to be child. attached to you. No. I don't want to be attached to you, though. Yeah. But then also, this is me, too. Knowing what I know about my father and the things I dealt with as a kid and what I had to see my parents go through in front of me, that, me and my brother both talked about this, that really made me think through having kids with any certain man. Mm -hmm. Like, you ever date somebody and you start seeing certain flaws where you're like, ooh, no, I don't want this for my yeah. child. I don't want him to be in this type of I, environment. The thing is, I, I've, I kind of feel like I've had kind of an unfortunate dating experience because I've dated very few people who I would ever have a kid with. Like I'm such a, I, yeah. I'll be honest, I may, and it could be like age for me too because I feel like I'm at an age now where my thought process is always like marriage and kids and things like yeah. that. But then like once they start talking and, and saying certain things, I'll be like, no, I don't want to put my, I don't want my kid in an environment yeah. with someone who thinks this way or yeah. talks to me this way. I saw something recently. Uh, I think it might have been a breakfast, breakfast breakfast club or something I saw. And someone said, oh, no, it was just a clip. It was this lady that said it was what article. men <laughs> fail to see. I don't know what it was. But she was like, what men fail to see when it comes to having a great household is like um, when you make the woman feel comfortable, it ra she raises your kids better. Mm -hmm. Like, in other words, if you keep her happy and you like loving her properly and yeah. you're showcasing that in front of the child, it helps the kid become a better person kid like he's yeah. better in school yep he's better at sports he's better at all these things which i was away like i beg to defer a lot of the black kids come great at sports because they ain't got no parents right <laughs> they ain't I mean, got. but i was like but she was saying it just helps their academics yeah and it helps them you know have a, a better life if it showcased that the father is showing the child mm -hmm. the love with the mother and that and that was always something that i never saw i never saw my father being loving to my mother and mm -hmm. being nice. I grew up seeing him being turned all the time to where I was like, I got to be outside on 10 with these dudes because yeah. this is what I'm used to. But like it was men that I dated and the growth that I've had, I knew that I wasn't ready because I wasn't attracting the right man. Mm -hmm. But when I would see how they were, I was just like, no, nah, I don't want to have no kids with somebody who talked to me like this yeah. or make me feel a certain kind of way and be attached to him forever. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. I just think we got to be honest with ourselves at this point and yeah. just say we have survived certain things mm -hmm. and we don't want to put ourselves back into a situation where we have to resurvive. Right. Like I don't want to have to be in a space where I'm going to have to heal from an experience with another person. No. And so we're pulling the plug on stuff a lot earlier than we used to. And we're waiting mm -hmm. because we're comfortable with who we are. We're comfortable being alone. And I think a lot of people are so uncomfortable with sitting with themselves, with like examining their thoughts, with going out to dinner alone. I see so many people talk about how scared they are to go to dinner alone. Go. Really? Yeah. I did it today. People go, well, they, they, they get so like in their head about what people are going to think about seeing them alone. I remember oh. last year I, oh. mm -hmm, I went to Valentine's day dinner. I'm single. So yeah. Valentine's day roll around and I'm single. I'm going to take myself out. Yeah. And I remember I went to like a five course meal, um, at this place called Pura Vida in LA. It's a vegan nice. Italian I've, restaurant. I've it was amazing. It, yeah. yeah. It was so good. But I remember telling people about it and people being like, Oh my God, I would be so embarrassed to go out by myself on Valentine's day. Why? Why? Do you not love yourself? <laughs> like, I be loving on me. I be loving on me. I be loving and on the me thing is, instead of a relationship. I need to do that more often now. Like I've kind of gotten away from it just with everything that I've been doing. But I think to a certain degree, a lot of people are so afraid to be alone. It goes back to the point of we're settling for what we don't want because we're afraid we're never going to get what we do want. And uh, yeah, everybody just kind of got to get to a point where they're comfortable like getting into their emotions and like healing their shit and figuring their shit out and then waiting until the right person comes along. Yeah. Cause uh, settling for somebody who giving you 15 of your 30 is just or insane. Or just to don't me. settle for something that you don't gotta settle. constantly be nagging or feeling like you're nagging. Yeah. Anybody that you gotta keep being like, I need, I need, or can you, can you like, no. Yeah. Don't waste your time. Don't waste you your time. You were going to say something about what you saw with the, what is that um, touring show? 
Uh, oh, tonight's conversation. The tonight's conversation, which I think is really funny because like that became a really popular mm-hmm. thing due to the fact that we're having so many uh, misconceptions and miscommunications with genders. Yeah, that became really popular. And what do you, what are your thoughts on that actual tour and that like that? I mean, I love what they're doing. They definitely are like bringing discourse to a lot of the conversations that we're having behind closed doors. Like mm-hmm. they're doing it on a public in a public space, and I think it's great. And I also think that. Some of what they say is super like important. So Trip is he's the guy with the hat and the glasses, right? Okay, I feel like yeah. he always has like good, good. He good does points. get majority he of gives, the clips. Like, good I do know points. that name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he said something like, um, "Men and women are raising their vibrations, and we're both looking at each other like, kind of, what else? What are you gonna do? Like, and mm, that's deep. Yeah, I think." I think the thing is, because we talked about how men are kind of doing like the bad bitch thing. I do think that some are putting in the work to try to be better. I think majority of people who are doing that, yes, are women. But I also think another point that he made was saying that um, people are requiring all these things of their partner and they're not willing to embody the things that they're requiring. So you're not Mm. willing to become the kind of partner that you want. And a lot of these people are like i want somebody who uh, like makes six figures i want somebody who uh, is emotionally available i want someone who is supportive who is kind who is loving who is generous but you're not that person wow and uh, it's really hard to attract that if you're not that yeah and so women will say yes i want somebody who makes money i want somebody who does this i want somebody who does that that's great Mm -hmm. the end all be all is not you making six figures or Mm -hmm. seven figures like it's fun if you do we can have a good time but essentially what people want is somebody who is going to value them and treat them with respect and treat them with kindness and be emotionally intelligent Mm -hmm. read the room understand that when i'm having a bad day i don't want to be sexualized understand that when i'm telling you i have anxiety I don't need you to give me a million different solutions all the time. Sometimes I just want you to listen and give me a hug. Right. Or I don't need you to get irritated with me when I don't feel like doing X, Y, Z. I just need you to understand that sometimes I'm going through a thing and you got to let me be. Yeah. Like, I think a lot of times we want all these things. I love what they're doing because I think they bring so much light to what the dating world is like. But to his point, yes, people are asking for a lot in relationships and they're not willing to supply what they're asking for. And a lot of that is happening with men where you're like, she needs to cook, she needs to clean, she needs to be a wife, she needs to like um, run the home, but you got to do that stuff too. Also, I think a lot of that conversation, you know, men that are the ones that are saying those things, you really should look at who you're hanging around Mm -hmm. and your surroundings. How are the women that aren't, whatever it is that you're looking for are not coming to you. Yeah. What is it that you're putting out? Yeah. you backing off what you're saying. Cause that was a really great, I didn't, I haven't seen that episode. Yeah. But yeah, I think a lot of men too are always, all they want to do is be in a club. Are you in the club? Are you in the club? Are you in the club? Yeah. So How when I know they're there, attach, <laughs> a, like, attracting clingy men, I have to look at myself. Like I have an avoiding personality. Mm-hmm. Of course I'm att- attracting clingy yeah. men because I'm not emotionally available. Mm-hmm. And so if, you meet a woman who is like checking a couple of your boxes yeah. and she's not emotionally available. Well, suddenly it's like, I got to conquer this. I that, got to figure out how to get this. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Though. Me too. I I kept getting this thing where I, I would attract insecurity. Yes. Like men that would be in, in the inside, they're insecure. Being on the outside, they had clothes, shoes, money. Mm-hmm. And I think what I learned, I want to say, I think what I learned was there was a huge part of myself that was insecure. There yeah. was a huge part of myself that hid behind my comedy, hid behind mm-hmm. these lovely twists and all of that. And I didn't take the time to see who that girl was because I was so busy running after my career yes. and wondering why I was attracting a certain type of man when it was like, you're, you damn near live behind the mask. And so, so you got to figure that out. What I figured out to that point is I am avoiding attachment. And this is why I think for a lot of people, it's just, you can't settle. I'm avoiding attached because I, struggle to connect with people Mm -hmm. when I do connect with people I can be like very like 
oh, hey, let's hang out. Like, I'm, I can be clingy. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I've had to, like, work on in myself. Why am I clingy? Well, I have abandonment issues. What why do I have abandonment basis? issues? You are what you attract. Yeah. Why do I have abandonment issues? Okay, well, I got to go back and heal some childhood trauma mm -hmm. and uh, really address, like, what in my life has contributed to me feeling like when I meet somebody that I really like, because it's rare, when I meet somebody that I really like, why do I want to hold on so tight to it? Why yeah. am I so, like just clingy detached clingy clingy detached mm -hmm. i had to examine that yeah and now that i've examined that i'm a lot better mm -hmm. and i can be a little bit healthier in a relationship with a person that i enjoy hanging out with but that was me having to say okay yeah. well why is this happening yeah yeah and, I, and that's what i mean i hear i feel like where are these men hanging out because they keep on being like oh all girls want to do is have wigs on and go to the club we and do, do this we do like that. our wigs and you're just like what does this have to do <laughs> with her being a great mom or mm -hmm. being a great wife but also yeah i think a lot of it has to be accountability on like what are you bringing to it? also i think too especially for me knowing a lot of men in the industry mm -hmm. i think the industry world is a really different world than the oh dating world. in la is like and like the industry world for example like yeah, there are a lot of no shit dudes and a lot of no shit women too because everybody in Hollywood is just trying to be seen and be popular. Mm -hmm. So I think with a, when I hear my male peers say women don't want to be wives, they just want to run the street and date celebrities. How do you know that? Mm -hmm. You're in that same environment where she's at constantly. Mm -hmm. I have had some of my comedian peers be like she's always at the party she's one of those how the hell do you know she you always, always at, the party? at the party yeah you always at the party you always at the party you know what i'm saying like he said every time i'm in the kitchen you in the kitchen yeah <laughs> like, all the hog moms like you it's like they yeah. don't look at that though yeah i do hear a lot of my guy friends being like it ain't no good women out here all they want to do is get the money you're hanging around mm -hmm. those environments you have to take a step back and heal yourself and change your environment and then maybe you attract a different type. And I also think you, this, that is consistent with sex too. Because oh, you'll hear yeah. men say, I don't want somebody with a lot of bodies, but you got a lot of bodies. So I how you that. don't want they somebody with a lot of bodies, but you got, you a hoe. You like, a hoe. And then you I just feel like, what are we talking about right what now? What are we talking but about But also here? I think once you are a woman of a certain age, if you've been dating, you've got bodies. Like it just is what it is. If you're a man of a certain age, if you've been dating, you have bodies. It's so weird that men contextualize the value of a woman based on how many men she slept with, which in reality, if we're devalued by who we sleep with, you're the problem. You're done. You're like, done. <laughs> men are the problem. And so I think the the constant thing is we want somebody who is not doing what we're doing. That's the, the mentality. But you're I'm not embodying what you're trying to attract. Yep. Yes. And so if you want somebody who is not sleeping with a bunch of people or who hasn't slept with a bunch of people, you need to stop sleeping with, with a, a bunch lot of, of people. people. Yes. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, the partner that you're hoping for deserves a good partner, too. Also, I think it's fair to say, because we run out of time, I think it's also fair to say, you guys, we're all human. Yeah. And I think we have to ask ourselves what we're going to accept and what we're not going mm -hmm. to accept. And I think you have to accept people for where they are and who they are. Mm -hmm. And if that doesn't work for you, that's your choice to that's move okay. on. And you don't have yeah. to be angry. We don't got to force it. You don't have to be angry. You don't yeah. have to be angry that this isn't working for you. I think a lot of times when things aren't working for me, the first thing I do is look at me. Mm -hmm. I don't go, these people are ridiculous. There's something wrong with him. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, why is he gotta, like this? Yeah. You know, so like, even like I was saying, like I attracted a lot of insecure, like, you know, overcompensating type of men in the past. And I had to learn that there was some part of me mm -hmm. that was attracting that. And when I took the break and the way that I met my current partner, you guys, it was nuts. It wasn't even like, a dating app or a event or anything it was i think for the both of us it was like what what are you doing here mm -hmm. it was very random and it i wasn't even and looking organic to date. yeah very random and organic i wasn't even looking to date which yeah. i know that you guys are probably sick of hearing that but i wasn't looking no but that's how like, the, the law of polarity is that anything you're trying 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 to attract is going further away from you yeah and anything you oh, have released, god i need money uh. yeah <laughs> <laughs> anything you have released is slowly like circling your orbit making True. its way into your True. reality yeah. yeah that's just how that works but 
But you guys, uh, next week we are going to have the guys. We're gonna bring some we're guys get some in men's perspective and get on their this. perspective yes. on this shenanigans going on in the street. Yes, we're gonna see what they gotta say. We're gonna try not we to. We have we gonna have a beat guest them up or too two. bad. We'll see what happens. <laughs> but we love you guys and we appreciate you listening to us. Yes, uh, thank new you episode. so much. New episode is out on Thursday. You can stream all the old episodes on YouTube, iHeartRadio, Anchor, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts, and interact with us. Please leave us you comments. Guys. Um, you can DM us if you have questions. If you have stuff that you want to see us discuss, let us know. We are open, y'all. We want to hear it. So thank you so much for watching. See y'all next week. Bye, booze.